Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for our webinar. We're here at Storm Headquarters in Brigham City, Utah. It's an exciting time of the year. There's a lot of great things going on in our sports, the middle of the season. We actually just had some exciting news that came through from the PBA. Storm's Jason Belmonte and Jesper Svensson just earned the PBA Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year honors, coincidentally both two-handers. And congrats to both of you guys and congrats to our tour team who helped them achieve that level of success. So that was really exciting. Now I'm guessing if you're tuning in here and watching today, it's because you've heard about some of the new technology that we have going on here at Storm. And it's not only new bowling ball technology. I mean, it's easy to get excited about new balls, right? The cover stocks, the cores, weight blocks, that kind of stuff. But we have some new technology that we've utilized downstairs in our test facility. And it's called BOLTS. It's Ball Onlane Tracking System. That's the acronym, called BOLTS. And Victor is going to give a brief presentation here and give you a little bit of a taste of what it's all about. From the foul line to the head pin, there are 60 feet. And those 60 feet are incredibly important to us because that's where every bit of the magic happens. That's where the ball, the chemistry, the weight block, the physics, everything occurs. And that's why it's absolutely imperative to us at Storm to get the most data possible so we can make the best balls on Earth. The computer-aided tracking system, known as CATS, has historically been used in bowling in order to track all of the mid lane, the heads, and the back end motion. However, we still feel like there's certain points and elements of ball motion that we're missing. And that's why, in collaboration with USBC, we have been developing the ball on lane tracking system, known as BOLTS. This system is really, really strong because it now takes data points from the foul line all the way through the pins. We're now able to go from collecting 17 data points all the way up to collecting approximately 240 individual data points. When the camera first detects the ball motion, it immediately boxes where it is on the lane, and then it circles it and finds the true center point. As each frame advances, it then locates the ball and determines exactly where it is to exact pixel resolution. This means that we can now accurately track a ball in every single frame within about 500 thousandths of an inch. Once we know where the ball is and when it happened in time, we can then use it to figure out all of those cool physics equations that tell us exactly what the ball is doing and why it's doing it. We're really pushing the edge of technology because we can track ball motion better than we ever have. This means that weight block dynamics, cover stock chemistry, and that magic in between is now more refined and brought into play than ever. Vic, that was some really, really cool technology here we're looking at, the bolts. You know, for all the years that I've been involved with ball testing and we've looked at ball motion, we've talked about in many of our seminars, we've always spoken about the CAT system, right? Yeah. And that, that's kind of been the standard, I think, for a couple decades now almost. Yeah. But this bolts, it seems like there's a whole lot more to it than CATs. Absolutely. Uh, bolts even, it, it, it takes us to the next level of technology. With CATs, uh, your standard test centers, maybe four, five, six sensors, and the, the super ones, maybe 30. But that's still only 30 data points, and typically those are all focused in the middle portion of the lane. Whereas with bolts, we have something that's a little unique. We can actually see it all the way from the release point at the foul line. But more importantly, we can now track it all the way through the pins as well. Through the pins? Mm -hmm. Really? Because I know that the CAT systems, there's no sensors that go through the pins. And, you know, when I bowl, when I talk with our pro staff, one of the things that's a key point for them when they're trying to get lined up and figure out how to play a, a pattern is looking at their pin carry, looking where their ball exits off the back of the pin deck, mm -hmm. and then they kind of work their way maybe backwards from there a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're referring to how, how it goes through the pins. I, I've heard our professionals yeah. refer to that in more than one case is how it's going through the pins is almost more important than what they're seeing in the middle part of the lane. Very, very interesting. And that's why I think the bolts is something uh, we're going to gain a lot of data. We don't even know yet what we're going to gain from it because there's so much it's, it's brand new territory. We've never seen this sort of information before. So now that we can track a ball from release, mid lane, all of that, but through the pins, that's something I'm very excited to see. Talk about energy transfer, when you can actually see frame by frame, you know, just that minor detail of deviation as it hits the head pin and then it goes to the three pin and then to the five, through the five. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it enough to where sometimes the ball takes out the eight pin instead of the nine. Yeah. There's a reason for that. 
And we don't know, is it because the ball came in higher maybe? Was it a high flush hit? Or, you know, could it have been a 4-9? Well, we can track that now. We can actually see, did that ball hit the, you know, the pocket at the 17 and a half with the, the slight offset? Or mm -hmm. was it a little bit higher? Was it not? We can track it now. So we can actually see, is this ball literally rolling through the pins better because of either the cover stock or core or surface adjustment or, you know, layout perhaps. So there's a bunch of things that we can now learn from this. I'm, I'm really excited. About cool. That. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. And I can tell you're excited about yeah, that. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to, you know, using this as we're moving forward and developing, you know, our, you know, new products and, and even better and better equipment as we're moving forward. This is, sounds like really cool technology. So thanks for, thanks for being here to help explain that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right, let's be honest now. Who doesn't get excited about new bowling ball technology? I know I do. I'm a bowler. I like to throw more strikes. I know you like to throw more strikes. So let's talk about this first new release we have coming up. It's called the Fight. All right, we've got some new cover stock technology. We've got some new weight block technology. And I tell you what, this bowling ball right here, we've got a lot of documented successes, a lot of excitement from our staff who have already had the opportunity to throw this ball prior to the release. And if you're a player with a little bit of higher rev rate, if you're looking for a little later break point, if you're looking for a little bit more hitting power, the fight is going to do it for you. Now, there's some technology here. If we're looking at the weight block technology and we're looking at maybe what some of the magic is that goes into this bowling ball, you know, you may have heard of a bowling ball called the high road. I'm pretty sure you've heard of a ball called the high road now. One of the things that makes the high road so special is the fact that it does not have any kind of a filler material around this weight block. It's just straight weight block and then cover stock material. Now, what do you notice when you look at this? weight block shape. Well, it's dramatically larger than any weight block we've ever released to the public. This is a brand new shape, it's a brand new technology, but it's not just the weight block, it's also the cover stock as well. It's this brand new shell combined with this new shape inside that produces this fabulous ball motion. So let's watch a video. We've got Hank Boomershine, who's our Vice President of Sales and also in charge of R&D, uh, the department uh, that produces and develops these great materials as well as Victor Marion, who's our R&D director. So we've got two great minds that are going to show you about this new technology. Let's take a look. This weight block design kind of came about about four years ago, having some very unique shapes and contours in a weight block and giving us something that was a little bit different something that we like to use, a true weight block. Because a lot of the manufacturers these days like to use cores. And so a core, we put a core around a weight block and then we put a cover stock around it. So a lot of times we lose the coefficient of restitution, that, that, that hitting power. And so the idea was to try to develop a big volume weight block with very, very unique contours to it. So really four segmented contours, we call it the iron cross because kind of when you look at it, it kind of looks like an iron cross. The high road's gotten hundreds of wins across the, across the globe in the last seven years. And so trying to go along the same premise with this new Iron Cross core, we're hoping to add another great piece to the line. So the, so the difference we find between the Iron Cross core and the FE2 core is the FE2 core was a big volume mass core, one of the biggest we've ever made at Storm Products. But we wanted to bring something a little bit bigger. So this core, in essence, is about 10% larger so it's about almost a half a pound heavier in total mass than a high road core. It's the heaviest weight block we've ever made, so it's gonna transfer into some high energy transfer through the pins and some pretty nice scores. When we developed the Iron Cross, we knew that we were pushing the limits of our technology with a higher RG than we'd ever seen before. So that's why we knew we had to push our limits of cover stock technology as well. When we were working on the fight, we realized that we needed to look at that back end coefficient of friction and really step it up a notch. What that means to you is a tremendous amount of friction when it encounters the dry part of the lane. So when you're thinking R4S, you should really be thinking about friction. This ball knows how to really charge. To demonstrate this powerful combination, we had Marshall Kent throw some shots for us. So with this, we picked one of his favorite layouts and we asked him to just bowl and tell us exactly what he thinks of it. Throwing it, the results were 
wow. There was just no other way we could describe it. Marshall himself was even impressed because he asked us, you know, what, what do you want me to do with this ball? And we simply told him, stand in, throw it right, and let's see what it can do. And every time he threw the ball, he'd move a few boards left and he opened up the lanes. It was absolutely phenomenal how well he could get this ball to face up from fourth arrow, fifth arrow. He was even lofting the gutter caps and was able to get this ball to tip into the pocket. But what really amazed us was how cleanly it went through the pins. Shot after shot, arrow by arrow, this ball was absolutely shredding the racks. The benefits of the iron cross core, later change of direction, which means higher COR, which means greater energy transfer through the pins, and greater pin carry. So when you think of fight, you have a brand new generation of weight block, and you also have a brand new generation of cover stock. When we put these two together, the thing you can keep in mind is that you will absolutely shred the racks, no matter where you stand on. Well, hey everyone, guess who we have here? It's Hank Boomershine, and you just saw some of the details about this new shape in the video. But we wanted to dig in maybe just a little bit deeper, maybe help explain some extra stuff that maybe you didn't have time to explain in the video, and talk a little bit about maybe what was the design concept behind this Iron Cross weight block, and maybe some of the performance features, early feedback from our staff, that kind of stuff. Sure, Steve. And the biggest thing about the Iron Cross core was we were trying to create another asymmetrical shape that gave us some versatility. We've had some great successes with high roads. Yep. Just a standard two-piece ball, no core. Right. So it gives us that performance proven. It's, you know, we get a little bit more hitting power because yep. the higher coefficient restitution, biggest volume weight block we've ever used. Ever, yep. And so the idea behind the Iron Cross was to create a little bit of volume mass around the equator, but create those grooves that give us still a little bit of, kind of wanting to push a little bit mm. and give us that good read through the lane because sometimes numbers... That's some of these shapes right here you're talking? Yeah, these little well, channels get, here? Yeah, uh, you get the channels and cuts and you put the ball inside that creates that little bit more mid yeah. lane. The FE3 ball in there does give us that little bit more torque and performance because you create a little bit of that torque effect between a, a, a giant mass, a slug at the bottom, and so it gives us that little bit more, I guess you want to call, it, not necessarily retention of energy, but slower to lose energy traveling down the lane. Okay. So it doesn't spin around as fast, mm. so it's a little slower and it's preferred spin axis, so it does give us a little more continuation down the lane. Some of our staffers, they've really, I mean, they've been scoring well with it, haven't they, these first few weeks? Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, staffers. Uh, Utah Open we just had last weekend. Yeah. Uh, it seemed to be the ball of choice for quite a few players, and that was a challenging 40-foot yeah. pattern that, yeah. that, that the team put together, and, and uh, it was uh, a lot about shot making. Uh, I guess uh, the other night, my wife, Lindsay, on the PBA pattern, uh, the Dick Weber pattern, bowled 780, nobody else in the house breaks 700. Uh, and a, a blower 710 and a couple of ring 10s and it's an 800, Could have been 800 series, yeah. Huh? So, yeah. Uh, but very, very good feedback and lots of different layouts. And we did some very dramatic mm -hmm. layouts from a six and a half inch pin from an axis to a two and a half inch pin from an axis and swinging the, the CG back and forth and creating some extra holes in some different spots to see if, it, if we did change dramatically in the way the shot shape was. And the nicest thing we noticed about it was even when we do a lot of big shifts to it, the RG and diffs don't change a whole lot. So oh, because really? of there's so much volumetric mass, okay. you can't get enough out of that core to change it too much, which oh, is okay. good. So, so when a core can maintain dynamic integrity, okay. there's a little bit more of that. Let's we'll talk uh, about that. So I was thinking power. consistency too. Consistency. It almost sounds like with different layouts and if such. If you did a two inch yeah. pin for a bowler and a four inch pin for a bowler, they're gonna get good shot motion out of both layouts. It's not gonna be something mm. where the two inch pin seems to labor a little bit and die out a little bit, you're going to have something that's going to start very consistent reaction. Cool. And so players, don't be afraid that if you have to drill some different unique layouts, that if we cut into one of these grooves a little bit more, a little side, we're not changing the dynamics any. We're not shifting the flare too much. It's going to give us something very driller friendly for the pro shops, very uh, driller friendly across for a lot of different styles of players too. So don't just, it's not just a pigeonhole to a high rev player or a low rev player. You're going to get a lot of versatility. We hope, you know, it's another high road, but in a solid version. Yeah. And people seeing this shape here, I mean, just looking at this, it's going to, what's that? It's got that yeah. appeal to it too. Yeah. And I, and I, and I've seen it as well in the reports I've heard. It's uh, nothing but positive stuff. So I, I definitely expect a lot of good stuff out of this ball. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. The Fight, it's a great new ball, has new technology, both the weight block and the cover stock like you heard. But that's not the only new technology we have here today to talk about. We have a new ball, it's called the Phase. And let me tell you what's different about this one. 
And I, now you can see just looking at this bowling ball that there's something new and different about this cover stock, right? It looks different, it feels different. It's called the AX16 cover stock. And you can see here that it comes highly polished. Now keep in mind too, you know, me for example, it's a pearl reactive. A lot of times if I take a pearl reactive ball that has a highly polished finish, I'll take and knock some of that shine off it to give me just a little bit better traction. But that's, that's me, that's my style, that's my game, and that's the lane conditions I usually bowl on. And this AX16 cover stock is more versatile than any cover stock we've ever come out with before, meaning that it's gonna respond to changes in the surface texture more than any other. Now, in addition to the new shell, we also have a new core. It's called the Velocity Core. And it's a very heavy, dense material, has a low RG, a lot of dynamics in this core shape and this weight block you're seeing right here. And we're gonna show you a video here. Victor is gonna explain a little bit more about this shape, how he designed and developed it, and why it's shaped the way it is, and what it's gonna do for you and for your game. So let's take a look, let's watch that video. When you think phase, you should really think mid lane control and power. The master line's always been known for being able to control the mid lanes and have its potential as it goes through the pins, and with the phase, this is no exception. We now have something that we're very certain is going to read the mid lanes, but give us a lot of control and power as it comes off the spot down lane. The velocity core featured in the phase has a really centralized, heavy, dense mass. This lowers the RG values, and that helps the ball read the mid lane. Then when we take it and we start cutting away the contours on the side, that created elongation, and that's differential to the ball. Finally, when we matched it with a heavy weighted slug, that brings its differential up to the 50s. We now have a ball that we're quite confident will meet the mid lane very, very well. That, with a very smooth and continuous motion on the dry, gives us a ball that is controlled, a reaction that you can read and depend upon. So to demonstrate how this ball rolls, we have Chad that's going to throw some shots for us. With his higher rev rate, we should be able to see how well this controls the mid lane and how smooth of a reaction you can expect off the bat. Chad's game is about 18 miles an hour off his hand, 470 RPMs, 45 degrees of axis rotation, and 10 degrees of tilt. We put Chad on a 38 foot sport compliant pattern. We opted to use a pin down layout at five and a half by five by four and a half. So this particular layout with Chad's game really exemplifies how clean this ball reads the pattern and how smooth the motion is and how continuous it is through the pins. The versatility of the cover stock is evident. No matter how we finished it, we still saw the same strong mid lane with that smooth motion off the back. This is the type of cover stock that you can have faith in no matter what surface prep you decide to go with. We put Chad on a 42 foot pattern as well, using a pinup layout. So by using a five and a quarter by five by two and a half inch, we were able to get this ball to read the mid part of the lane a little bit earlier. This gave the ball a lot of continuation through the mid lane, but you can still see how smooth and controlled it is as it exits the pattern. What makes the phase so unique is the AX16 cover stock. This particular cover stock is very cool in the fact that it's a chemical difference that you can physically see. When we put the baseline materials together and then we add in the additives, the curing process is where the difference in chemistry becomes evident. Because as the ball physically cures and the cover stock begins to harden and take shape, that's where you actually see the color start to shift, or in this case, phase. So when we started developing this cover stock, this color shifting and phasing really led us into the next evolution of cover stock technology. So to demonstrate, we'll take a baseline polyol, very clear, very clean, and we'll pour it on top of our additive. Now in order to get this to activate, we have to heat it up in order for it to catalyze. So by adding some heat to it, you can start seeing the dispersion into the polyols, and that's what really starts this baseline chemistry reaction. So with the additives that we chose and the polyol, the phasing in its apparent. And that's how this ball really gained its name. The velocity weight block, low RG, high differential, mid lane potential, continuation on the back. The AX16 cover stock, a brand new polyol with brand new additives. Combine the two together and you can expect a difference that you can visibly see. It looks different, 
because it is different. Well, hey, look who we have here joining us. It's Corbett Austin. Corbett, you're our Vice President of Operations here at Storm. You're in charge of everything that's involved with the manufacturing of a Storm bowling ball. So from the cover stocks to the finish, the, even the fragrance um, all falls under you. So tell us just you know, a little bit about this new bowling ball. Is it, is it the same as other cover stocks? Is it different? Have you worked hard on this? What, tell us about that. Well, it, it's quite different, Steve. It, it's, been, um, it's been something we've been working on. Of course, like a lot of things in here, you work on them for a long time. You try to perfect them before they go out into the actual production process. Um, but it's, uh, we're real excited about this cover stock because of how neat it is. It does make the ball look a little different, but it's, uh, it's kind of uh, a neat in how it uh, looks. But the performance is where they're really going to be excited about and how this ball performs on the lane. So just being involved in something new all the time, innovative, that's what drives Storm and the employees here and what drives me as well to, to bring products out to the market that are, that are extremely uh, well received, but also something new and innovative that, uh, that the market will, will actually be excited about and want to talk about. And we get lots of tour requests. I know you do lots of tours downstairs as well. There's people who love to see how bowling balls are made. So this is, you know, when you're able to see this kind of go through and kind of come to life, it's just got to be pretty exciting for you. It is. It gets noticed right away. Even with our employees, they notice that color right away and, and the different look on it. But uh, again, the performance is what's going to really stand out on this bowling ball. Absolutely. Thanks, Corbett. Yeah, thanks. Hi there, Chad McClain here at Storm Products and today we're going to show you just how different this technology is in the new phase by going out to the line, opening up a case box and showing you right before your very eyes. Let's go. Sixteen pounds. Sixteen pound ball. All right. Here goes nothing. Uh, check that out. Well, there you have it, folks. It's the real deal. Phase. Hey, folks, look who we have here. It's Chad McClain. He was a star of the video. Chad, that's not something that you ordinarily just walk around and just pick up bowling balls, no, right? I no, mean, sir. what was the inspiration for that ball and why this ball in particular? So, everyone's seen the video by now. Uh, while we were filming for it, uh, after a few shots, uh, I noticed that the ball was still super tacky. So I was rub rubbing my hand over it and it felt very interesting and then all of a sudden I was able to pick it up and that's something I've never really been able to do, especially after a ball has been thrown a couple times. So th that we took a photo and it sparked a lot of discussion. A lot of people thought that my finger was in the hole somewhere, there was some sort of movie. Couldn't magic. be real, right? It was yeah. not real. Yeah. So we yeah. made that video to show anyone that we could take a brand new phase out of the box pick it up and it's just that tacky. 16 pounds, right? 16 pounds. 16 pounders. So is that, is that something you could like just do like right now, like live? Like I could try. Uh, I've never been able to do it with any other ball except this one. So this is 16? It is. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. I don't know how you do that, but I can hear it when it's definitely it. sticky, yeah. tacky. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for coming. Right. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. Sorry. easy now, oh, cowboy. Strength, All right. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks for being here. Thanks. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. We appreciate your time and attention and decision to join us for today's webinar. We hope you got a lot out of it. It's a lot of new stuff going on here at Storm, new technologies in the cover stock, the weight blocks, the cores, and even the different tools and instruments that we use to measure ball motion down in our test facility as well. So thanks again for your time and attention. Remember to always bowl up a storm. <laughs>